Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Just a quick note, this is not my video about uh, dealing with artists' block. I will be doing that next week, um, so stay tuned for that. But let's get into this one. I'm going to be teaching you about how to draw scarves, uh, particularly on a female character and uh, having it blowing in the wind and so forth. And I want to try a new technique with this one. For those of you who like to follow along line by line with these uh, lessons, um, I'm going to try a new way of showing you line by line how to get the pose right. Now, now the first line is uh, of the top of the head and the back of the hair. So hit the pause button if you want to follow along and see, do your best to reproduce that line. And I'm going to go ahead and show you in a kind of a line by line way quickly how to draw this pose. So now we see a line that goes uh, from the waist up across the back and across her shoulder. Uh, if you want to follow along, go ahead and hit the pause button and then uh, uh, copy that line and we'll move on to the next one. So uh, here you see we've drawn more of the arm uh, coming uh, all the way down, bending at the elbow and heading up towards her hand. Uh, and uh, we'll move on and do a few more lines to finish this up. So this is the other arm uh, with the uh, forearm tilting up uh, so that the two hands can come together. In fact, maybe I should refocus a little uh, so you can see the, the details uh, as I draw the hands. So these are the guidelines of the hands, uh, you know, one hand uh, uh, resting on top of the other. Just basic lines to help you get started. And uh, maybe the last thing I'll do here is the lines of the face. All right, so we've got the basic guidelines of the face. I decided also to put in some hair uh, that will be blowing along with her scarf, you know, with the wind uh, at her back. And um, yeah, hopefully, let me know what you think of this new technique here that I'm trying here, uh, giving you opportunities to sort of hit the pause uh, if you want to follow along and uh, reproduce these basic guidelines. Well, I'm going to pull back and refocus so that we can get into uh, drawing more of the details. All right, well, let's get into drawing this scarf. And um, what I'm going to do is take this hand that is sort of reaching up across uh, and have that uh, resting upon the scarf uh, and sort of holding it in place. And uh, the pose that I've tried to create here, you can probably already see, is one of uh, um, a vulnerable looking, uh, unsure. Uh, a uh, girl who is um, trying to stay warm against the cold. There's something about this pose that uh, you see a lot in um, manga, this idea of uh, vulnerability, of um, almost insecurity that is somehow presented in a very attractive way. So uh, that's what I thought I would go for. Now you see I've, I've sort of bent in on the sides here. This is, I think, something that happens commonly with scarves when you're wrapping them around your neck. And uh, so this line is coming right across here. I'm trying, I'm being careful that it doesn't cover her mouth. Like I want it to come near but not quite uh, conceal the mouth. And my idea is that it's going to sort of break into, um, and I'm going to erase her shoulder a little here, it's going to break into two parts so it's like double wrapped around her. And uh, so this line is going to come across here and then maybe bend up uh, into these two divided areas of scarf. And that'll come more into play later on when we um, are uh, drawing the pattern uh, of the scarf itself. And um, now it's time to move on to drawing the lines of the scarf as it's blowing across uh, in the wind. And so I'm going I'm to make one line that comes across here, and you can sort of look at her uh, hair, this, this line of her hair. I know it's a little... <laughs> it doesn't look like hair right now. It looks like a flag blowing off the side of her head. But that will eventually be her hair. Uh, but if you're looking for... if you want to reproduce this exact... Uh, line work uh, for your scarf. Uh, feel free to sort of use this as a measuring stick of knowing where that, where the lines of the scarf are going to occur. Although I'd have to say, you know, with uh, when, uh, these are sort of general principles, um, uh, I think maybe you really shouldn't be <laughs> trying to draw line for line every last little uh, detail of the scarf that I draw here. Maybe use it more as a general tutorial. But um, what, where it becomes a little more interesting is when the scarf starts to blow up into the air at the edge, and uh, you see um, we divide into sort of two parts here, and this is the upper edge 
I'm going to have it curve down like so. Now what happens as an artist is you imagine, you sort of imagine the other edge of that coming down. You're not going to see it, but you want it to sort of make sense that way, right? So that the, uh, the part that's uh, coming underneath will um, read as being a continuation of that same piece. So, you know, this line is not seen. Uh, uh, but it, if if you are thinking about that fold, then your your scarf will make more sense, I guess, yeah, even as it's blowing in the wind. And I always like there to be tassels at the end, so I'm going to create a sort of end here that uh, divides into various uh, tassels when we get a little further along with things. Um, otherwise, those are the basic guidelines of uh, the scarf itself. Now, um, what I want to do is maybe uh, give you some help with adding more details to the hair, even though this is uh, supposed to focus mainly on uh, just drawing the scarf. I think that maybe we can uh, divide some of the time into drawing other aspects of this pose. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and refocus so that we can see the hair a little better. All right, so we have only the very barest uh, of guidelines here for the hair, and so I want to sort of help you out if you want to draw this particular uh, character or, or draw your own character in this pose, uh, give you some added guidelines. So uh, most of the lines on this side of the head are going to be sort of curving in this direction, you know, following the, the edge of uh, her head. And uh, one thing that I've decided to do is to have her ear uh, be at least a little bit visible here. So I'm going to do a little indication of her ear poking through the hair. I don't know if we should have her entire ear visible though. So how about if I have, I'm going to cover up one part of it. You can sort of see it as her, the different strands of hair are blowing around. Uh, but I want you to pay attention to how um, if you're drawing hair, you have to have a sort of a, a, a plan for how the hair is falling uh, and uh, so if you imagine it all sort of flowing from the top of her head, as I believe it does in real life, then all of these lines are sort of flowing back toward that initial guideline. Now, um, my idea with this drawing is that the hair is being uh, blown about by the wind, so we have to um, have these lines here maybe come up off the head a little more. Uh, in fact, her scarf is blowing so much that I think we need at least a one or two stray strands of hair uh, coming up uh, into the air. Now, I don't want to devote too much time to uh, the details of the eyes and so forth. I have other videos that have uh, followed that, but again, you know, if you want to hit the pause button at this stage to try to reproduce uh, exactly the kinds of eyes uh, that I'm giving this character, feel free to do that. Um, but really what I want to do is move on to this other edge of the hair and um, show how this big, what I said was like a flag, <laughs> the Union Jack. Um, I've got England on the brain since I came back from Manchester. I wanted to thank again the people who, some of these people traveled so far to um, see me do this signing in uh, Manchester, England a couple of weeks back. I just was really blown away. We had people from Liverpool, Coming there with the speaking like the Beatles and John Lennon, yeah. No, that's not true. That's <laughs> that's just me offending the people of <laughs> of uh, of uh, Liverpool and every Beatles fan who ever walked the earth. Uh, I am a huge Beatles fan, I must say. I don't know if that's come up before. But anyway, I should be getting back instead of going way off on this tangent. Uh, my idea is that the hair is blowing up in this direction on one side, and then as it reaches the middle, it begins to sort of blow in the opposite direction, these strands of hair curving down. And then you'll see that this sort of initial thing here was strictly just a guideline. It's not really necessary anymore, so I can e erase it away and leave us with, uh, hopefully, a uh, fairly attractive... Uh, a uh, series of strands of hair that that convey this idea of wind blowing um, through the air. And with that being done, maybe it's time to sort of get back to my original mission, uh, that of showing you how to draw the scarf. So let's refocus and get into the details of the scarf. All right, so I realized now that I've pulled back that I kind of forgot to do one th last thing with the scarf that I had intended to do, and that is to draw the other end of the scarf so that we see both uh, edges of it. And uh, this one is kind of coming down here, and so again, with the tassels, I'm going to have them uh, down like so. 
But what I want to get into now is the idea of uh, drawing a uh, sort of Burberry uh, pattern on the scarf. Am I even saying that right? Is it Burberry? A Burberry pattern? There I go back with my terrible English accent. Um, but uh, I actually studied, I went so far as to study the uh, Burberry pattern and try to get it right for this video. That's me, man. Go in the extra line to show you how to do it. And I noticed for the first time in my life what the Burberry pattern really is. It's, uh, it basically comes down to three uh, dark black lines that uh, between each one of these black lines is uh, white. And then of course the base color of the Burberry uh, pattern is um, sort of a, a ochreish, yellowish, um, very light brownish, whatever you want to call that, beige kind of a color. Uh, but what you want to do is get these, these groups of these three black lines very widely spaced. And I want to show you how uh, if you're um, aware of the folds in the scarf, that can be reflected and revealed by way of your pattern sort of folding back. See how I'm doing this? I hope that's showing up. So that uh, when we see the black lines over here, they are sort of curving back on themselves and that helps to give us a sense of the uh, surface of the scarf. And um, if you were doing this full color, uh, you would be adding uh, red lines that come across like so. And it's just one single red line right here, and that would be com complete the feeling of the uh, Burberry or Burberry. Uh, somebody tell me what's the right pronunciation there. Uh, this right here, this line right here is not part of the pattern, it's sort of the underside of the scarf being revealed. And finally, just to complete the pattern, I'm going to uh, draw uh, an indication of that, you know, what would be the red line, the sort of interspersed uh, red line that comes across these uh, bolder black lines. And over here, we are also going to be doing that sort of three thick black line pattern. Now, you know, those of you who don't want to do the Burberry pattern or any particular pattern, you can just sort of wing it and make it up as you go, come up with any pattern you want to. But uh, I thought it would be fun just as a challenge to, to try to get it right. Uh, and what happens is because I've divided this upper section into uh, a couple of different areas, you're going to have like a different pattern coming across here. And then say these black lines, they're not going to neatly come across here because it's two separate, you know, it's wrapped around her neck twice. So um, you may want to reveal that by having the black lines shifted across, right? So you're deliberately having them not... Uh, not continue across to sort of reveal the breaking of that line. And I feel like we're getting close to uh, moving on to final details. I'm going to, um, uh, you know, kick it into time lapse, as I like to say, to uh, get some of the final line work in with my trusty black Prismacolor. But then I'll be hopefully have uh, a minute or two at the end to, to talk about the shading and uh, different final touches like that. All right, well, we've got all the black line work in, and uh, much as I would love to spend a lot more time talking about shading her hair and so forth, I think really the uh, main purpose of this video is to cover the shading of the scarf. So that's what I'm going to focus on. And again, if you want to do this sort of uh, Burberry pattern, then you will want to put light shading uh, into these areas between the um, sort of triple black stripe uh, pattern uh, spot. So you'll see that I'm sort of lightly shading this in and uh, being as careful as I can to leave this area uncolored. And that will give you that authentic Burberry look which is, um, in my experience, a fairly popular pattern all the world around. Uh, when I was in Japan, I would see uh, Burberry scarves all over the place. So it does sort of uh, tie in with the uh, anime manga look. I never know whether to say anime or anime. I was talking about this with my son, who, of course, speaks Japanese, and he, he said he felt it was weird to say anime. 
and I kind of have to agree with him. It sounds like you're sh <laughs> like you're trying to show off your Japanese. Yes, I'm a big fan of anime. And then I go home and sleep in my futon. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. The, the, these questions that I wrestle with on a daily basis, how to pronounce these things. But you can see me going around sort of shading in those uh, little in-between areas. And, of course, there will be secondary shading in terms of um, trying to make it look more three-dimensional. So that I would take this bottom area down here and give it extra shading. Um, this underside uh, section over here, probably give that... Uh, a good bit more shading, and so forth and so on. Well, I really wish I could tell you um, a lot of tips about shading the hair and different stuff like that, but I think this video has gone on long enough, so let's go ahead and kick it into time-lapse to finish off the drawing. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear what you think, uh, especially about my uh, idea of showing the guidelines at the beginning in a sort of a step-by-step -step way. Let me know if that helped you, uh, and if so, I can use it in future videos. But for now, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We got the Miki Falls and the Brody's Ghost graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga, my How to Draw book. I greatly appreciate anyone who gets those books, and of course, anyone who subscribes, anyone who just watches my videos. But do you hear that sound? That is the sound of a heat-seeking missile headed in my direction, programmed to annihilate me unless I add the blushies. Oh, man, that was close. <laughs> Sorry for that elaborate wind up to this video. Anyway, it's clearly time for me to lay down this pencil. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.